Okay, this little video is an introduction to enzymes for year 12 and obviously for year 13 revision. Now you do enzymes at GCSE. So we're gonna start off by going over kind of the basics, things that you should already know about enzymes. And then we're gonna add on a little bit of A-level knowledge. So we're gonna cover not only the lock and key mechanism, but the induced fit model of enzyme action. And we're also gonna look at a question. So stay tuned till the end so you can do that question with me. First things first, let's just put together a little summary of what we know so far about enzymes, what they are and what they do. So enzymes are what we call biological catalysts, which basically means they speed up chemical reactions inside living things. So the catalyst means it speeds up the reaction and because it's biological, it means it works inside a living thing. They're made of protein or they are proteins. So obviously that means they're made up of amino acids and they have a complex 3D tertiary structure and they are globular proteins. So they have more of that spherical shape as opposed to that fibrous shape like structural proteins do. And um, obviously they have an active site and the active site is specific to a particular substrate, which you'll know from GCSE, we say the active site is complementary to the substrate. So that's another word that we need to get used to using in our answers. The way that enzymes work is they lower the activation energy. Now the activation energy is basically the minimum energy required for a reaction. Yeah, the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place. And what we say is that enzymes lower the activation energy. Now, the reason they do this is when the substrate binds to the active site, or you could say when the enzyme substrate complex forms, that's gonna put pressure or tension or you could even say stress on the bonds in the substrate, which means the bonds are more likely to break because as the substrate joins to the enzyme's active site, it's going to put tension or pressure on those bonds, making them more easily broken. Um, or if the enzyme is an enzyme that is joining substrates together and making bonds instead of hydrolyzing bonds, then the reason that reaction occurs with less energy is it provides a platform for the substrates. And because it's providing a platform and bringing the substrates together, it's going to make it more easy for bonds to form between the substrates. So it kind of depends what the enzyme is doing, right? If it's hydrolyzing bonds, it's putting pressure or tension on the bonds in the substrates, they're more easily broken. If it's making bonds in a condensation reaction, then it's bringing the substrates together and providing a platform, making it more easy for those bonds to form. So that's just kind of a little recap or introduction to enzymes. Let's have a look at the mode of enzyme action. So at GCSE, you learn about what we call the lock and key model. So this is the idea that the enzyme or the enzyme's active site is like the lock and the substrate is like the key. And this is a great model because you're conveying the idea that the enzyme is specific to the substrate in the same way that the lock is specific to the key. And you're also conveying the idea that the enzyme's active site that we can see here is complementary to the substrate. Okay, so be careful not to say that the active site is the same shape as the substrate because you can see here it is not the same shape, it's just complementary in shape. The shapes complement each other. So the substrate can fit into the active site, binds to the active site, and that's when we say it forms the enzyme substrate complex. This is when the reaction takes place. And in this example, you can see we're going to hydrolyze the bonds in this substrate. And then we're going to form the products. Now, in the reaction, the enzyme is not used up 
and it's not affected by the reaction, so it can be used over and over again many, many times. Now, that's what you learn at GCSE, and we still use that um, model at A level, but I'm also going to introduce you to a second model of enzyme action. So this is what we call the induced fit model. Okay, and the difference between this model and the lock and key model, which you can kind of already see on the diagram, is if you look at the enzyme's active site, it is not initially complementary to the substrate. Okay, so we can say the active site is not perfectly complementary. It's not initially complementary to the substrate. But you can see that as the substrate moves into the active site, the active site changes shape and becomes complementary. And again, the substrate will then bind to the active site. And again, we'll get the enzyme substrate complex, which is when the reaction takes place. And then you will get your product. So the only difference really is with the induced fit model, we're suggesting that actually the active site changes shape and becomes complementary to the substrate. So in terms of an analogy, we say it's more like a hand and a glove, yeah, where the glove is the enzyme's active site, the hand is the substrate, and when you put your hand into the glove, the glove does kind of mold itself and change shape to fit around your hand, which is in reality what the enzyme's active site is doing. So that's the induced fit model. We're still saying that enzymes are specific, so don't be confused and think, oh, that means any enzyme can catalyze any reaction because they can change shape. The enzyme is still specific, okay? Um, it just changes shape slightly when the substrate binds, so the active site becomes complementary to that specific substrate. Let's move on and quickly think about denaturing. So here we can say that the enzyme has been heated or the temperature has been increased and you can see that the enzyme has been denatured. So obviously thinking back to GCSE, we learned the word denatured. We already know not to say things like the enzyme is killed because remember the enzyme is not alive. It's not a living thing. It is simply a protein. Now, obviously, high temperature denatures enzymes. So does extreme pHs or any pHs that are too far away from the optimum pH. Do remember that low temps do not denature. And I'm going to do another video all about the different factors that affect the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. So make sure to watch that video to find out more about how low temperatures also affect the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. But they do not denature enzymes. They just slow down the activity of the enzyme. So what does denatured actually mean if we add on some A level knowledge to this? When we denature an enzyme, the tertiary structure is lost, okay? Now, the tertiary structure you'll remember from our video on protein structure is held together by hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and also disulfide bonds. And these bonds all form between the R groups or the variable side chains of the amino acids. Now, when we denature an enzyme, the tertiary structure is lost because the bonds, the bonds that I've just named, or at least the hydrogen bonds, because they're the weakest, the bonds holding the tertiary structure together will break. So hydrogen bonds will break first because they're the weakest. Ionic bonds may also break. Remember, disulfide bonds are super strong, so they're not going to break. Neither are the peptide bonds between the amino acids because they are strong covalent bonds. But the hydrogen bonds will certainly break. The ionic bonds may break. The tertiary structure is going to be lost because we are breaking these bonds. So what we say finally, if we get a question about this, is that the active site changes shape and then we can get that word complementary in there. It's no longer complementary to the substrate. 
And then depending on how many marks the question is worth, we could even go on to say the substrate can no longer bind to the active site or enzyme substrate complexes cannot form. Okay, and obviously if the enzyme substrate complex cannot form, we won't get the reaction, the product will not be made, the enzyme has been denatured. Okay, let's have a look at a question together just to apply some of our enzyme knowledge and practice using the key terminology that we need to be able to use in an answer. So we've got an enzyme here called maltase and we can recognise that's an enzyme because it ends in A's, most enzymes do. This is used in the industrial process um, or production of glucose syrup. So it catalyzes the following reaction. So it hydrolyzes maltose, which is the substrate, into glucose, which is the product. Due to an error in the factory process, the enzyme sucrase, again, ends in A's, was added to maltose instead of maltase. Now, sucrase catalyzes this reaction. So for sucrase, the substrate is sucrose and the product is glucose. Now, because sucrase was added instead of maltase, no glucose was produced from this batch. Use your knowledge of enzyme action to explain why no glucose was produced. So what we need to say here is sucrase, which remember was the enzyme that was added in error, or sucrase, the active site of sucrase is not complementary to maltose. Because it's complementary to sucrose, it's specific for sucrose, but it will not be complementary to maltose. So, sucrase cannot bind to maltose. You could say enzyme substrate complexes cannot form. So ultimately, there's going to be no glucose produced. Now, this was only a two mark question, but what I'd be doing here is thinking, have I used all my key enzyme vocab? So I've used the word active site because I've talked about sucrase's active site. I've said it's not complementary to maltose. I've also said it cannot bind to maltose, and in terms of key vocab, I've said enzyme substrate complexes cannot form. Now, if this was worth more marks, I'd also be questioning, can I get the phrase tertiary structure in there? And I can, because I could say something like sucrase has a different tertiary structure to maltase. OK, so it's a different protein. It's a different enzyme. Sucrase has a different tertiary structure to maltose. Then I've got more key vocab in there. Therefore, the active site is not complementary to maltose. Therefore, sucrase cannot bind to maltose and enzyme substrate complexes cannot form. This is how I approach any enzyme question. It's really why I like them, because I kind of know if I can get the terms tertiary structure active site, complementary, and enzyme substrate complex in there, it's likely that I'm going to pick all the marks. I just need to use those terms correctly in order to answer the question. And remember, enzymes are specific. So we could have maybe even got that word in there. Um, we could have said something like sucrase is specific for sucrose, whereas maltase is specific for maltose. So you can't use a different enzyme to catalyze the same reaction. I hope that's been a useful little intro recap video into enzymes. We're going to be posting another video about the factors that affect an enzyme control reaction, where we're going to look more at temperature, pH, enzyme concentration, substrate concentration, and enzyme inhibitors. So do make sure you watch that video as a follow-up to this one.